today on Be Something Wonderful, how to shift realities with a simple, powerful, imaginal scene. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I have a fun one today. I want to talk about this client that I talked with back in the summer. And during that time, he created this one simple scene that he said has changed his entire life. I want to talk about that because when we talked back in the summer, he was, he was talking about, he was saying he's someone that has a lot of insecurities, that he feels that he, that he, that he experiences a lot of rejection, that he feels powerless, that he's shy and awkward. And again, all of that created from an identity, from assumptions that he had within about his self-concept. So we got in that whole discussion that in every moment, you are a new identity, that you, are in, you're in a, you have stepped into a new portal of reality, a new identity, that from the present moment, you're creating who you were and who you are and who you will be in all time, in all realities, that none of those stories are the truth. They're just assumptions, right? They're just beliefs, assumptions that you're making up now, right? That you're calling the truth, that you're identifying with. You don't have to identify with any of them. None of them are who you are. You're the awareness that gets to decide who you are in every moment. We talked about that and he created this powerful scene. This is what he said yesterday. I don't know where to begin. That scene, my imagination, the knowing has transformed my life. I know it was me, so trippy. What, what he's talking about is, back then he created this scene, and I'm going to talk about it towards the end of the video and the, and the steps he took and his, how he created this imaginal scene. But essentially that him being in front of a crowd in an auditorium in a stadium and him getting applauded or a standing ovation. We're going to talk about this because he said this changed everything. He got promoted. He, he now has a, a bunch of dates where, where he said it was, it was hard for him to meet people, meet girls. Now he's dating. He's making friends easily. He knows that uh, I just get to assume it. And then it's reflected out there that that, that reality comes from within me. He really gets this idea that, that, that it's not based on the past. It doesn't matter how many years you believe you have been a certain way. You get to change those assumptions right now. He used affirmations like I'm respected, I'm sought after, and I'm powerful. These were his specific, but he said it was the imaginal scene that he said he imagined off and on for a month. And then three months later, or four months later, within that four month period, the first month of imagining off and on, and then three months after that, within four months, he, he was already promoted. He had a, a business, um, uh, like a luncheon where he had to get up and speak and he got a standing ovation. He said it, it was much, a lot like his imaginal scene, right? After he totally forgot about it. He said it wasn't a packed auditorium or stadium, but it was a packed, um, I guess, kind of a, a luncheon area, a big, big hall where there were a lot of people, right? Very big. So, Trippy is right, and I want to show you some of the things we talked about yesterday and also in our session over the summer. Reality is what you assume, believe, imagine, affirm, and say it is. It's law. To, believe in, to assume and believe otherwise is to believe in secondary causes or an outside source. So when he was identifying as someone that gets rejected or someone that's shy and awkward or powerless, well, then you're assuming there's some other source determining that because you as source, as I am awareness, you would not decide that would not be your choice. Do you see it? So if it's not your choice, you don't have to assume it anymore. That's not who you are if that's not what you want to identify with. You're the awareness within all those things take place, right? You're not separate from the reality you are seeing and perceiving. You are source of it. You're not separate from any of it. You are source. Do you see it? So the, the, that, that he was 
really getting this idea that I'm source. I get to decide if I'm out, outgoing and loved and respected or if I'm shy and awkward and powerless. I get to decide all that. Your perceiving and experiencing is your reality. So all of it is your reality. But, but remember, ultimate reality is that awareness that, that's untouched and untainted by any of it. All of it's just an experience and you get to decide in every moment what portal you're going to walk through, what reality you're going to experience, what version of yourself are you going to call forth. You get to decide all of that. So 3D physical manifested reality doesn't exist apart from your experience of it. Your idea of it or of yourself, that's reality. It, your experience is your idea of it, your self-concept is your experience and perceiving of reality. Just as pleasure and pain don't exist outside of your experience of pleasure and pain. They're just ideas, right? They're just ideas within that awareness, right? There's no world apart from your ideas because ideas have leave not their source and you maintain the world within your mind and thought. This is a course in miracles. The whole idea that those ideas, those thoughts, those concepts about yourself and the world don't leave their source. So you, all you're ever experiencing and perceiving are your ideas and thoughts and assumptions about yourself and the world. Just as that, that the ideas of pleasure and pain don't exist outside of you. They, they don't exist outside of the experience of them. It would be absurd to think that they exist outside the experience of it. That means nothing exists outside of your experience and perception of it. Wow, that's powerful, right? Your assumption and ideas about yourself and your self-concept are your perceiving and experiencing and your perceiving and experiencing is your reality, all of it. Wow, powerful. And this the whole question came up about conditions. It even came up in the channel, I think, the channel and with, with a client last week. I'm sick of hearing about conditions don't matter, but remember, what does that mean when, when all of the spiritual coaches and the greats talk about conditions don't matter? It means that, that they are not source of anything that you are. That's what conditions don't matter mean. They can't matter because they're not source of anything. They're not being caused by something out there. That's what that means. It means conditions don't matter means they have no power or meaning other than the power and meaning that you give them, right? So wondering how to change them, waiting for them to be different, complaining about them, reacting to them, gives them solidity and reality, implies that there's a secondary cause, implies that they can cause things. There's no cause there. That's what we mean by that. That's what, that's what Jesus, when, when he was talking to the, his disciples and his apostles, asked him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. In other words, the disciples are always asking, show us. It's you saying, show me, what, what are the source of those 3D conditions? What's the source? Who's the source? Show us the source. And what is Jesus? Your I am awareness, who you are, your identity as I am. What does he say? I have been with you so long, right? I have, I have been so long with you, yet you have not come to know me? Your I am awareness, who you really are, that you are source, that those conditions come out from within you, right? That they're not separate. There's not a separate source. They're, they're, not, they're not separate from your experience. That's why Jesus, said, Jesus says that your I am awareness. I've been with you so long, yet you have not come to know me. He who has seen me has seen the Father. He has seen me has seen the Father. You are source. I am awareness is source. So to be sick of hearing conditions don't matter makes no sense. Your source of those conditions, you get to decide what those are going to be, right? They can't matter because they have no power or meaning outside of you. You're the one that gives them matter or makes them matter. That's your I am awareness. He who has seen me has seen the Father. That's powerful. How can, and, then, and Jesus goes on to say, how can you say, show us the Father? How can you wonder about the change in the conditions or waiting for them to change? How can you complain about them or react to them? How can you give them solidity and reality? That's Jesus saying, how can you, how can you ask me? How can you say, show me the Father? 
If, you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, you've seen Source. If you've seen those conditions, you've seen Source. It's you, right? If you're seeing those conditions, you're Source of them. If you're perceiving them and having an experience of them, you're Source of them. There's no difference between what you're perceiving and experiencing in your imagination. In other words, your inner reality of assumptions of yourself in the world and what you're perceiving and experiencing in the physical reality. There's absolutely no difference, yet we give the physical experience more reality, more validity, right? Imagination is the power to perceive what is absent from the senses. Neville got it. In other words, your I am awareness is the power to perceive what is absent from the senses, from the physical senses, right? You can, in your imagination, knowing your desire exists in your imagination, simply expect its fulfillment in the other world because there is no separation. You are reality, right? My awareness is God and all things are possible to him. Therefore, what I'm imagining will come to pass. Neville got it. Three great quotes from Neville got it, really simplifying this idea that your perceiving and experience itself is reality. There's no other reality but you, that I am awareness in what you're perceiving and experiencing, within or without, because there's no difference between them. Right? Wow, that's powerful. Imagining and assuming your desire is fulfilled mentally, perceiving them within, perceiving and experiencing them within, is just as real as physically perceiving and experiencing them without. There's no difference. They're both the same. Yet, you judge appearances more real and solid. You judge the outer physic, the physical perception, the physical experience somehow more real than the inner experience. That's what Jesus meant by judge not according to appearances. Yes, you, can't, you cannot possibly judge experiences. That was one of the messages. But also the other message is they're not, when you judge them, you're judging them more real, more valid, somehow more reality than your inner experience. So all are real experiences of reality. That's what righteous judgment means. Judge righteously or, right, or righteous judgment means to judge all experiences as experiences of reality. They're all reality. He who has seen me has seen the Father. They're all reality. It's all one. I and the Father are one. That's the physical Jesus, the Son of Man, and and the Son of God, both, saying, who has seen me has seen the Father. They, I and the Father are one. There's no separation, right? So it's not about faking it or pretending or making it up, as we had talked about in our session over the summer. And what are you really doing? You're not faking it. You're not pretending. You're not making it up. You're imagining. You're shifting to a reality and version of you just as real and true and valid as your manifested 3D experience and identity. You can choose either. You're always in a new portal. You're always in a new identity. You don't remember the past identities, the past experiences, the past perceiving that believe so real that you believe you're locked to a certain identity or a certain, certain way of being that does not create anything. It doesn't exist in the present moment. That's all that exists. Your identity, who you decide to be, who you choose to be right now, changes who you were and who you will be. All done in the now moment, right? It's a new reality. You create. So he created this imaginal scene, the packed auditorium, this scene where they, they applauded him wildly. Here's what he did. He entered the portal. In other words, he was walking to the podium, right? Huge stadium auditorium. The lights were off. It was very quiet. He was just imagining, he was just imagining himself hearing his own footsteps, walking into a, 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 the lights are off. So he's approaching the podium now. This is his imaginal scene. In other words, he's entering the portal, entering the identity, shifting to the new frame or film role or, a, or version of him or, or parallel reality. Then he looks out from the podium as the lights come on. His hands are, and he had, he had his hands on the podium. He used that physical sense of touch, imaginal touch, right? But physically holding on to the podium in his imagination. It's Neville Goddard it talks about when he's talking about climbing the ladder, right? He puts his hands on the podium. He's looking out, looks out from the podium as the lights come on. He's seeing thousands of people talking, noisy, moving about. So he's seeing the crowd, the conditions right? That normally he would feel being rejected or shy about or awkward or not right. But here he's looking out firmly from the podium at that noisy crowd. 
And, and oh yeah, and then the third step, then you put your hands on the sides of the podium. So he had his hands on the side of the podium and he speaks into the microphone, good evening. This is what he did, right? Good evening. And then when he said, he said, as he said that, the crowd went silent and all their eyes were on him as he commanded his presence, right? It's I am declaring, I am here. I am now. I am who I say I am. Good evening. All eyes are on him. I am is in the room. I am is in the house, right? The crowd goes silent. Then he says, thank you for being here and listening to me tonight. That was it. That was the scene. As the, as the audience then erupts in applause and a standing ovation for those words. Do you see it? It's just him creating this scene where, of acceptance, of love, of, of joy, of him being who he says he is. Right? No big technical details. He didn't go into any big stories. I am who I say I am. Thank you for being here and listening to me. Right? Then four months later, right, he got promoted. He's been dating. His social life has picked up. His whole life has changed. He had a lot of details about his house, about money, all these things that he was talking to me about. But one of the big things, the, the real shocking one, was him receiving that standing ovation at that business luncheon. He had a, it was full, it was a big, big um, event, right? A business event. It wasn't a packed auditorium uh, or a stadium, but it was a packed, huge, huge area, event room, where there was a big crowd. And, they, and that's exactly what happened. They got up and gave him a standing ovation after his business presentation. That's power. That's how to shift realities with a simple, powerful, imaginal scene. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on our videos and our channel. Um, thank you for being part of the Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, and also for being part of our membership channel. We just released a video a few days ago. We also have another live stream to be broadcast from the member on the membership channel from the studios here in Las Vegas at the end of this month, Saturday, December 30th, 2023 at 9 a.m. in the morning Pacific Coast Standard Time. We're going to come to you live from here in the studios and be something wonderful with our ninth live stream to be aired exclusively on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. If you're a member, thank you for being here. Tune in. If you're not, you can check it out. There's a link below. Creators, with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude, this is Tom Karen here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Until next time, we'll see you soon.